Here we're back 18 months after Ping Pong's last dental cleaning. Uh, we're back here with Dr. Beckman. Uh, I wanted to um, share this so follow-up experience with um, all of my uh, wonderful dog owner lovers and cat uh, owner friends. Um, Ping Pong now is 13 and a half years old and um, there were some issues actually that came up before we came down here which I think is really important to, to, to share with you um, because I think that it, it will demonstrate um, one, uh, how critical ongoing um, uh, mouth care, what we really say is what's going on below the gum line is, but also so you can also see the kind of care and attention that goes into a decision to put a dog under anesthesia and especially a senior dog. Um, Ping Pong, as he said, is in what I consider good health for 13 and a half, but she has some issues with her liver enzyme being elevated. And um, in, the, in the past couple of weeks before the dental cleaning, there was some reservation about putting her under anesthesia and if she could handle that stress. And Dr. Beckman worked very, very closely with my own vet, Dr. Schwartz. It was truly a team approach and I felt and felt that ping pong was being so taken care of. And what they were really weighing was, well, you know, how important was it at this stage that they get in there, that they are able to, again, see what's going on below the gum line, see if there's bacteria there that potentially can go into her bloodstream, and affect, of course, other organs. Because as I'm always emphasizing, the mouth is the gateway to the rest of the body. So we wanted to take these into consideration as well as obviously her ability to withstand any kind of anesthesia. Um, the decision was finally made that this was that important. Um, that, you know, we're not looking at ping pong or like your babies, even at this age, being here um, a few more days, a few more months. You know, we're looking at years. And so when you're looking at years, this is something that is critical even at this stage, and I want to emphasize that. Um, and again, what I also want to make a point of is even if we had decided not to go through with the dental, um, you should, because I'm sure that your vet is the same way, you should truly feel confident that they are, I mean, the care that they are giving your pet before they go further with any anesthesia um, is, is really weighed very, very carefully. Uh, so, as I said, we came down here. Um, we weren't sure, Dr. Beckman wasn't sure what would find this time. Um, he was actually very happy in terms of the, the condition of, of her mouth, which I will give to, as I say, to Healthy Mouth, which, um, as we know, is the home care portion of this comprehensive dental care program. No odor there. That's good. That's good. Okay. I really don't see any blatant problems other than the tartar. Um, you got a little bit of mild gingivitis in the back. Um, and based on, based on those uh, changes that we saw last time, uh, we kind of eliminated most of the problem except for she had that... Um, Pocket. Those, those pockets around the canine teeth. So we'll, we'll definitely look at that uh, again really closely. It'd be a good idea, as it always is, if we um, have an opportunity under anesthesia to take x-rays of everything. Yeah. Just look at all the teeth okay. and make sure there's no problems anywhere. And um, then uh, usually what I do is I will take the x-rays and then Chris will clean. Mm -hmm. And then while she's cleaning, um, I'll look at the x-rays and by that time I've got a pretty good idea about what's going on. Okay. And then after uh, she's cl done cleaning, then I'll go back and I'll do my exam. Okay. She'll tell me what she finds okay. and then we'll put it all together okay. and come up with a plan. Hopefully we'll just be cleaning. That would be great, wouldn't it? That's what we'll hope for. For 18 months, 19 months, <clears throat> that would be... Yeah, that would be great. A lot, of, a lot of these little guys come in and they, they, even though they have um, much more severe disease than she has, they will not show any pain. Mm -hmm. And so that's a big problem. Right. Because we don't get them in when right. we should get them in because right. they are not demonstrating anything at home. So the pet owner says, well, 
she's not painful or he's not painful. Right. And consequently, we, we don't see a lot of those patients early. We see them late, mm -hmm. and even late, they don't show signs at home. A lot of the signs that the, the pet guardian will see is that they appear to be maybe slowing down a little bit, they attribute it to age, right. and then we see them, we take x-rays, we find all this pathology, all these changes under the gum, and we approach that from a therapeutic standpoint, eliminate it by extracting or doing periodontal surgery or cleaning or a combination thereof, and then when we get them back on recheck in two to four weeks, mm -hmm. they notice significant differences in their behavior from a positive standpoint. So that's, that's huge and that's very common. That's most of the time, it's not the exception. It, it's the rule. Right. Um, so it's sad, you know, we'd like to be able to get them in. Um, when, when you have, have been so good about getting ping pong in early uh, before those changes happen and get them to the point where we can do a lot before the changes get really bad. I can, I can probably count on one hand the number of patients that I've seen in the last six months that came in for what it was perceived as oral pain. Mm -hmm. The rest of them come in for um, halitosis, mm -hmm. maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe the owner notices something unusual in the mouth, maybe some redness. Um, maybe the veterinarian picks up on that and mm -hmm. sees changes and recommends that they see us. So it's, it's unfortunate. Mm -hmm. A lot, of, uh, a lot of our decisions are based on the primary care veterinarian and their interaction with, with the patients because they see them all the time. We only see them mm -hmm. maybe once or, or twice for a recheck and consequently their opinion and their testing that they do prior to us seeing the, the patient is paramount. Right. And if we can't communicate like Dr. Swartz and I did, then we, we don't maximize the safety for the patient. So this, I will tell you, it's again something that you should also be very proud of. Again, working very closely with your veterinarian. Um, as I will always say, the mouth is the gateway to the overall health of your dog and cat, just like it is with you. We, we always knew uh, that there, there was a potential for an association between the disease locally in the oral cavity in the form of periodontal disease and what happens systemically. And we could see that because once we would treat our patients and they'd go home, they'd feel so much better. Probably a lot of that had to do with the fact that they weren't uncomfortable, but maybe even more so because the bacteria not only stays locally, it also is mobilized into the systemic system through the bloodstream and it's carried to the kidney and the liver and the heart and the lungs. Now we know, based on some research that was done at Colorado State uh, and uh, with Linda DeBose and some others more recently, that actually there is a correlation between what happens in the mouth and what happens in those organs. We find that based on the research that was done at Kansas State University by Linda DeBose, mm -hmm. that the, the local disease will get into the bloodstream and it will cause pathology in those four organs, the heart, the kidney, the liver, and the lungs. And comparing that to patients that don't have periodontal disease, it's pretty significant. So we know that the local disease can affect them systemically. And that being said, we think that maybe that those bacteria, when they get in the bloodstream, cause the patient to be uncomfortable as mm -hmm. well, or lethargic, or mm -hmm. uh, because they have endotoxins associated with the wall that surrounds the bacteria. And when, the, when those die in the system, they cause uh, some changes. So um, we, we, we know that there may be a correlation between the longevity as well. We can't mm -hmm. say that. There's mm -hmm. no studies mm -hmm. that show that we, we're, we're actually causing our patients to live longer, but when you think about it, if you're eliminating local infection that's affecting everything, sure. kind of makes sense, even though we'll probably never have research that shows that. Uh, it, it, it just makes sense from a theory standpoint. You know how great your mouth feels after you go to your dentist for your annual visit? It is no different for your dog or cat. Now imagine if you didn't brush your teeth for the year after. How good could your mouth be? How healthy could it be? How great could it feel? Not very good. It is no different 
for your dog or cat. Which this means is that after the dental cleaning, this is why I'm so emphasizing in terms of home care that, it, again, it is no different for your pet. Even if you didn't brush that first night after your own dental cleaning, you already would have plaque starting to accumulating. It is no different for your pet. The real value and benefit of getting below the gum line and getting in that mouth, just like with your own cleaning, is so that you can then improve your mouth, just like with your dog and cat. When you do professional care with home care starting that night, and you know, I'll give you the, the bad and the good news. The bad news is, just like you taking care of your mouth, home care, it's not a one week thing, it's not a one month thing, it's not a year thing. It is for the rest of their life. The great news is that through Healthy Mouth, um, there now is a product that has real science behind it, that has shown to be truly effective, that is safe, that has all human grade ingredients that I would put in my body, you would put in yours, and you can feel great about putting in your dog and cat and that is super simple to use. It had to be that simple because I invented the product for myself and I am someone who, you know, if something has to take, you know, one second to do instead of, you know, two seconds in order for me to continue doing it. The other great news about this is that the care of the mouth, the health of the mouth, for something that is so critical to your dog or cat's quality of life, um, overall health and longevity, this is a part that you, as an owner with your vet, can absolutely pay an, play an integral part and control. But with preventatively, even for your kitten or puppy, doesn't matter if there are no teeth, you need to keep the gums healthy. Home care is the, the basis of maintaining a reasonable interval between cleanings in the hospital. If we can't do home care, in, especially in the patients that are predisposed to periodontal disease, mainly the, the smaller breeds, right. but it can be any, any breed or any size dog, then we're going to have to increase the interval that the patient comes to the hospital to have professional cleaning. If we can brush every day, if we can use water additives every day as a replacement for, for the water, mm -hmm. if we can do chews and other adjuncts to mm -hmm. brushing, uh, with brushing being the staple, we mm -hmm. can in theory, greatly increase the interval between cleanings, and that's our goal. The problem is most people won't brush. Most right. dogs won't allow brushing. So we have to rely on things like the water additives, which mm -hmm. are really easy. Mm -hmm. And with the, especially with Healthy Mouth, uh, with the Veterinary Oral Health Council seal of approval, we have a 80% reduction in plaque that has been backed up by research from BOHC, so that's huge. Not the cat product. And, and mm -hmm. it, absolutely, with the with the uh, with the yeah. dog and the cat product, those are a, a huge addition to our regimen of things that we have that we can use to fight periodontal disease, especially when nobody w nobody wants to brush or not many people want or can brush. And it's not it's not that um, I don't think that most people don't want to. I think that their lives are are very involved and that's another thing that they would prefer not to have to deal with, especially if the patient's not really that comfortable with it. So if we can do chews and diets mm -hmm. and water additives, mm -hmm. things in those categories that are easy and part of the daily routine, then it makes it much easier to do home care and we can still extend that period between cleanings without actually having to brush. Right. Brushing's the best, right. but less than 1% of, of pet parents are going to brush right. and it's probably way less than 1% right. that, that maintain it. You know, if your dog or cat unfortunately has, you know, cancer or something else, you don't have a lot of control. This is an area that you can control. And to me, that is amazing. It's amazing. And, you know, people will say to me, well, when if you go get the professional care and you use healthy mouth, What's gonna happen? Well, I, I didn't make this up. I give credit actually to Dr. Hale because he said something that was so simple and that made all the sense. You don't want anything to happen. <laughs> what you want is that how the mouth was after the cleaning, which obviously is 
that the tartar is taken off, which is the, the plaque that becomes hard, becomes calculus, that new plaque, and plaque is the culprit. Plaque is what causes the inflammation and the gum disease. Is that so new plaque can accumulate, so that that doggy breath and catty breath that you thought it was normal or just would always come back, it isn't normal and it doesn't have to come back. If you don't do home care, yes, it will come back. But if you do and there's nothing else going on in the mouth that shouldn't, it won't. So what will happen is that what was always happening before won't happen. And what I will tell you is when you go back to your vet within that next, might be weeks, months, for something not doesn't matter if it's related to the mouth, you make sure that they take a look in the mouth. And I will tell you that your vet or your veterinary technician will say to you, come over here. And when they say, I want you to take a look at the mouth, which most probably, like many of us, you probably never taken a look inside that mouth before. And they will say to you, wow, this mouth isn't going back to where it was before. Obviously, it, it might not go from one to 10 like with ping pong, but I will tell you, you are starting to get improvement. And when they say to you, you're doing something different here. I know for me, it was my aha moment. And I finally understood what going in and, and doing both the cleaning, getting the x-rays below the gum line, what the value and benefit was. And it's huge. I will tell you, in terms of the investment that you make for your dog and cat, this is, I feel, one of the most critical and important investments that you will make, that with home care. And again, when you're able to see the transformation and then next year, when you go in again for the, um, for the cleaning, they're not starting all over again. They are going and now able to take with your animal then, you know, go to that next place. Hopefully, if they're young enough, not do any extractions or as many extractions, but absolutely that health of that mouth is improving and improving and improving. And I will tell you, your dog or cat knows the difference. They know that perhaps for years they were suffering in silence because that's what pets do. I will tell you, when it comes to the mouth, they know you're taking care of it. We must, we must stress that, that, that with that phrase of professional dental cleaning mm -hmm. is not just cleaning. Cleaning Correct. is somewhat Absolutely. of a byproduct of the yeah. whole scenario. The most important thing is from the gum to the root tip. Right. And if we if we have a choice, yeah. if I if you told me that I could only look below the gum in ping pong today, I would leave any tartar and right. I would go under the gum. Because the changes under the gum are what's significant. So it's an evaluation not a cleaning and I think that it's very important for practitioners to understand that. I agree. Professional probing, dental x-rays, and um, a good oral evaluation are the keys. Cleaning is kind of the byproduct. And aren't these questions <clears throat> that, that an owner should ask their <clears throat> veterinarian if, if, it, if they're going to do this during the procedure? I think the main thing is do you have dental yes, radiography? Yes. Right. And do you do dental x-rays or recommend dental x-rays on all your patients? That's, that's tremendous. That's the key to detecting disease. And like I said before, if I didn't have radiography, I would quit dentistry today. It's just that important. What you have to make sure is that your vet has imaging equipment, again, to get below the gum line. And what has gone on with ping pong and continues to go on, unfortunately, is what had happened for the seven years when I had not taken care of her mouth, as I've discussed many times. And as a result of that, there was there and has been a lot of bone loss. And these are things that now can't be prevented. Um, but you just have to be able to keep ahead of them. And again, when teeth and additional teeth then have to be extracted, because there's no way for them to, to basically stay in the mouth or they would be causing her pain, they have to come out. And again, I still, I do feel badly about this. On the other hand, um, I also feel pretty overjoyed that working so closely over these last years with my veterinarian and by doing home care, um, that otherwise her mouth is in pretty, you know, is in pretty good shape. She did have to have three extractions. Um, again, these were 
you know, um, already things that were in motion, but I understood why the teeth had to come out. Um, you're looking actually at ping pong um, the morning after um, the procedure. And uh, one of these teeth, as he was saying, the root was, he was uh, apparently there for 45 minutes playing a pretty, you know, a pretty good game with ping pong. But this, as I said, is, is the care that they take. Again, with the anesthesia they use, you must understand, it is not like olden days. Morning after, 13 and a half year old, she's already eaten, she's already done her business, she's already been running around, as you will see. She's already gotten into trouble, as you will see. And again, they even kept her bows in. Um, so, and I can tell actually that she actually feels good, even though, you know, the, there's you know work that's been done. I can tell that, you know, looking back, she probably was having more pain there. And obviously, as you see, it's no longer here. As far as your your other question with the, the pet owners not knowing what to choose from the standpoint of home care. I think if you look back to what you see when you walk into one of the pet superstores, mm -hmm. there are aisles with nothing but dental products. Yeah. And studies show that if people have too many choices, sometimes they don't make choices. So that's where the Veterinary Oral Health Council comes in. Right. VOHC.org has a list of all the products that have been approved through research that show that they do what they say they do. Mm -hmm. That's the basis for making decisions on home care from a pet owner standpoint. Go to the website first. Those products have been documented from a research standpoint that they actually work. One other thing I want to address is, you know, brushing of the teeth, where people just obviously cringe. I'm not going to brush my dog's teeth or anything else. Well, let me tell you something else, and this is the other great news with Healthy Mouth. The clinical finding with all of the Healthy Mouth products that, by the way, um, all now have the VOHC seal of acceptance, which I want to want to discuss later, later um, is that any remaining plaque in the mouth when healthy mouth is used as the foundation of your dental care program gets very, very soft. Why this is great news is that when it still remains soft, that's when you can get it out of the mouth. And again, as I said, plaque is the culprit. When plaque doesn't come out of the mouth, then it becomes hard and then it's, you can't get it out of the mouth. But what this means is that when you use it in conjunction with a a good and healthy dental chew with there are some really terrific dental diets that are there and even I will tell you um, toothbrushing your animal I know you've you even if you've tried it you said oh I can't have chasing them around they hate this toothbrush animals dogs and even cats don't have an aversion to toothbrush they have an aversion to pain no different than you when that mouth is not in pain anymore I won't touch Ping Pong's mouth, but I'll show you later. They will let you in their mouth because it doesn't hurt anymore. So if you start them on healthy mouth, and I will tell you then, as the months go by, or might be even a year, and the mouth isn't in pain, they will let you in there. And you will start, like me, I wasn't always a crazy lady, well, always about my dog, of course, but not always about the mouth, but then, you know, the mouth wasn't the enemy anymore. And for seven years I said I didn't look at it. And now I will tell you it is a source of my pride and joy. And I will show it to everyone the same thing. And I will tell you obviously ping pong is now quote in the business. So 10 times a day people want to, you know, or veterinarians want to take a look at her mouth. She, she's not only proud of it, it doesn't hurt anymore. Yeah, one big question that we have that we entertain quite frequently is how do we get our pets to brush, uh, allow us to brush their teeth? And probably the best way to approach this is when they're, when they're real young, uh, as puppies, before they have a chance to age beyond six months of age when their adult teeth come in. If we start them early and acclimate them to make manipulation of the oral cavity a positive experience, then many times when the adult teeth do erupt at six months or greater, we have a, an excellent opportunity to continue that type of manipulation in the form of brushing. So what we want to try to do initially is to 
in many cases, if the pet is not huge to have them on an elevated surface where they feel maybe a little bit less acclimated to escape. And in this case we don't have any problem here, but with puppies and other dogs that may be an issue. So find an elevated surface uh, if possible. If the dog is extremely large then the floor is fine, maybe in a small room up against a corner would be the best way to start. And by manipulating them positively like we are here, that's a pleasurable experience for them and we can continue that by working with the mouth generally with something that, that tastes good and the toothpaste that's made for dogs is generally pretty tasty. They like that pretty well. So what I would suggest is for the first couple weeks before we actually do anything in the form of brushing is to use the toothpaste on your finger and allow them just to, to lick it off. And uh, many times they'll, they'll enjoy that. And um, they know that when they get up on that table or they get in that corner, that same spot every time that they're going to get that little treat. And that's certainly a positive experience for them. You can talk to them, you can pet them at the same time, and that further reinforces that. Then after a couple weeks, once that's been established, then we can start to place the toothpaste itself on the brush and let them, let them manipulate the brush. So we're not actually trying to brush at this point, we're just allowing her to, to lick that off of, of the brush get that nice nice doggy taste. And then once that has happened then we can actually use the brush on the teeth and probably one of the best ways to approach this is to use, use the brush just as we would with our teeth, mainly concentrating at the gum line and, and as much of the crown as we can. Go all the way around Go uh, spending a, just a couple seconds on each tooth. And then for the bottom teeth, sometimes we have to actually put our finger up behind the canine tooth if that's, if that's possible, if there's not another tooth right below it that's going to injure us if we do so. And then we can get back in the back part of the mouth a little bit, holding the lip down with one hand and brushing those back teeth as well. Now, we don't have to worry about the inside part of the teeth, the part that's toward the midline in the upper jaw, which would be the palate, or toward the tongue, because those areas are extremely difficult to get. And most of our pathology actually occurs on the outside part or toward the gum or the lip tissue. So by, by slowly acclimating them, starting, starting with a positive experience for them without introducing anything into the oral cavity, and every couple weeks as they get comfortable, depending on the individual, we get to the point where they accept the brushing and uh, we can continue that throughout life. The best interval, obviously, is once a day. Um, if you can do it more than once a day, fantastic. And um, even, even a couple times a week is better than none. But we'd like once a day is our ideal.